Mr. Panzeroni with the in-depth science program, The Focus. And week by week, we are going to talk about a pathology. And this evening, we are talking about a really very serious pathology that unfortunately affects many Italians. We are talking about renal failure. And I would say to introduce it with this. Kidney failure is the reduction of the main physiological capacity of the kidney. On a practical level, it's a progressive accumulation of toxins, that is, substances that go in turn to poison other organs of fundamental importance, and the reduction of what is called the endocrine function of the kidney. Basically, it's a progressive and chronic intoxication. Here he was. He was Professor Alberto Aldrizzi, who basically explained to us that kidney failure is a reduction in the filtration capacity of the kidneys and therefore an increase in toxins that at that point are not eliminated and therefore damage the whole body. Well, of course, we have to remember that the kidneys are essential organs for survival, especially since the moment we no longer have kidney function, we can only survive a few days. Well, the kidneys basically are able to purify of the blood a whole series of metabolic waste, such as urea, but also to keep our blood pH stable and to go and recover a whole series of minerals that would otherwise be lost. Do you think that these organs are able to filter more than 180 liters of blood every day? Look, as we said before, kidney failure is a very serious condition. Do you know how prevalent it is? Well, unfortunately, it's a real national health emergency. You think that more than 5 million people suffer from kidney failure at various stages, and every year about 10,000 people have to start dialysis. But in short, regardless of these 10,000 people who see basically almost destroyed their lives in terms of quality, well, you have to think that hundreds of thousands of people who have kidney failure problems at various states actually suffer from an acceleration of all the metabolic diseases and a substantial shortening of their lives. Look, so we understood then that renal failure, we can consider it a degenerative disease. I would like maybe together with you and with the help of this video that we are going to watch to understand if the official medicine has understood the causes that cause that cause, then obviously this pathology. Let's see it. Primary prevention, that is prevention of the causes of kidney failure is very difficult because at least a certain percentage of cases are of unknown origin. One can act on what are considered major risk factors. We are talking about high blood pressure. Let's talk about proper nutrition. Let's talk about what are the most well-known cardiovascular risk factors. Here again, Professor Aldrizzi told us that the causes are basically unknown. However, one should pay attention to risk factors such as diabetes and high blood pressure. I can tell you that sometimes I really don't understand this medicine because if on the one hand they tell us that they don't know the causes why then this renal failure comes, however on the other hand they tell us and they know it very well that high blood pressure and exaggerated blood sugar induces the appearance of this pathology so they know what is the reason why this pathology appears. If anything they haven't yet understood what are the causes that induce both hypertension and the problem of diabetes. We, Mr. Panzeroni, found a video where we talk about nutrition as prevention for this kind of disease, and I would like to submit it to you. Let's see it together. Some foods certainly cause what we can call kidney fatigue, so the damage develops uh, progressively over time. We are talking mainly about foods of animal origin, so foods that are particularly rich in protein can fatigue our kidneys over time and therefore be harmful to kidney function. So what are the foods to prefer that are also good for our kidneys? The best diet to preserve the health and normal function of our kidneys is certainly what is normally referred to as the Mediterranean diet. That is a diet particularly rich in bread, pasta, fruits and vegetables.
In short, I understand that it is better to be vegetarian, all things considered, but the patient is suffering from kidney disease. How should he manage his diet? Diet management is basically based on strict control of dietary intake of animal protein. You should not eliminate any. You should take as much as our body needs. The general concept is renal failure, low animal protein diet. Let's say the nutritional status is ensured by the intake, by the right intake of calories that are provided again, as we had said before, by carbohydrates, so bread, pasta, and proteins of vegetable origin that have no negative effect on kidneys. Mr. Panzironi, we have always listened to Dr. Alberto Aldrizzi, who explained practically that prevention, but also treatment, at the level of obviously nutrition is done with foods that are low in animal protein, but rich in complex carbohydrates. What do you think? I think if the topic were not so important, it would almost be a smile to listen to this kind of dietary advice. Basically here you are giving a diet that was responsible for the occurrence of the pathology and trying to cure it by giving an even more extreme diet towards carbohydrates because the moment we go to recommend a substantial reduction of animal protein, we have to replace these proteins with plant foods that are even richer in carbohydrates. So it is a matter of greatly increasing the glycemic load. That was the same problem that induced the occurrence of the pathology. Mr. Panzeroni, we have already spoken about kidney disease and its causes. You just explained that precisely it depended on food consumption and the Mediterranean diet. But certainly by now there are hundreds, if not thousands, of scientific studies confirming that the occurrence of this disease is due to two important aspects, the alteration of our blood pressure, thus hypertension, and on the other hand, an excess of glucose and thus diabetes. We have demonstrated so many times, explained so many times in these broadcasts, how both of these two pathologies basically result from eating Mediterranean diet foods. We have seen our witnesses that simply with a month's change of diet, they are able on the one hand to reduce blood pressure, bringing it back to the optimal ranges, and at the same time to bring blood sugar back to the correct levels. So what to say? Mr. Panzeroni. You mentioned that we have said this several times, however. I want to ask you kindly if you can tell us again what kind of relationship there is between diabetes and hypertension and renal failure. Uh, let's say that the kidneys are composed of glomeruli, about two million, that do nothing but basically filter the blood. They are balls of capillary vessels, and these capillary vessels have to keep the filtration rate constant because as the blood pressure increases, which is a normal, let's say, metabolic process, they still have to counteract this excess pressure with a substantial change in filtering capacity. They do this by means of muscle fiber cells, the smooth ones that go to regulate the windows, therefore the fenestration of these vessels, and therefore maintain, as I said, the right filtration constant over time. We know perfectly well that an inflammation Free radicals are able to damage these protein structures, these capillary vessels, and therefore lead to their remodeling, and therefore you go and lose their ability to modulate pressure, and you go and alter what are the fenestrations. At that point, the kidneys are no longer able to filter the blood properly, and the pathology precisely of renal failure appears. Mr. Panzeroni, thank you for this insight. And now it's time to bring in our witness. So I call Mr. Angelo Magaldi. Here he is. Do you want some help? No, be careful. Please. Welcome, Mr. Angelo. I invite you to have a seat. Here we are. So, Mr. Magaldi, you, let's start right away with one thing. You have been diabetic for several years. Since when? 25, 28 years. 
25 and 28 years old and found out in what way? By chance, because I had a diabetic mother. And she measured her blood sugar one morning, and then because I didn't feel so good, she said, try to measure it yourself. I measured it and I had 350. So it's very high you found it. Then at some point in 2016, 2017, so at the end of 2017, you find out you have some kidney issues, kidney function issues, right? Yes, I wanted to see if it was right, if I had to do something. And I started to do examinations through the doctor, who, however, would go in front two years without telling me anything, but do this, do that, then do the other one again and never say anything. In 2017, after I had septicemia. Septicemia, for which he had also been in a coma, if I'm not mistaken, what does the dietitian tell you about this? Gives me a diet suitable for nephrology that I used to do. Bread one slice, two slices every day to eat lunch and dinner some. of carbohydrates of pasta and 40 grams of meat or 60 of fish. Sure. So basically what we said earlier in the focus, they increased your carbohydrate share and decreased your protein share. I began to do this diet, following it scrupulously. Of course, because his doctor had given it to you, however. What was happening by doing this disproportionate diet, let's say very little protein and a lot of carbohydrates? I would get fat. Fat and you up. He was starting his blood sugar with all the consequences of that. Sure. So you basically started to gain weight. All your test values, including, of course, your blood sugar, they were out of whack. And so then I know in the month of July 2018, you go for an examination. And at that point, they tell you that your kidneys were not functioning any more than... And I said, but they work very little. But how little? I wanted to have a more precise thing. Finally, a 5-10%. So they basically tell you that the functionality of your kidneys is down to 5-10%. So basically 90% they were no longer functioning. And they tell you though that you have to do one important thing, which is they have to set it up for dialysis. And then they put the I implants in, I have a fistula right? here where I have to do, to do the blood wash. Blood wash, dialysis. So you going how often you were going at the time to check? 25 days. Of course you were going every 25 days because being obviously in a terminal stage, your kidneys were unfortunately not working anymore. They had to keep an eye on you for every eventuality, for every kind of worsening. Then at that point in August 2018, however, he began to follow the Life 120 lifestyle. Zapping, I see Mr. Adriano on the television talking about this panacea of eating that was for practically everything. This one I tried, that one I tried, that one he told me with a dialysis and I said, let's try this one too. Sure, let's try this as well, rightly. It seems to me a smart thing, but most importantly, linear. You start doing the Life 120 lifestyle. You continue, obviously, to be under medical supervision because, obviously, it has to be that way. And until you get a few days ago, right, they give you this clinical diary. It's official so we can read it. The creatinine you had at 6 and 3 went to 5 and 7. Renal function, basically stable, so it didn't get worse, but it remained stable.
And the checkup instead, every 20 days, how often they told you to do, it's written here, but I want to ask you. 45 days. So they days. also more than doubled the monitoring. <laughs> One last thing before obviously concluding. Do you eat animal protein? I thank you.